And uh, I would like now to turn to the business side. Uh, we have uh, Jonathan uh, Cordero with us. Jonathan uh, is a, a young German working for a, a pretty young global company, Eurasian Resource Group, which is, uh, in my point of view, one of the greatest hopes that we have, as it really tries to do everything in, in mining projects all over the world help us diversifying. Jonathan uh, uh, started his career with the Boston Consulting Group, and since 14 years he is uh, uh, dealing with uh, well, the subject which we have right now with uh, critical raw materials, and he is today the number two in this global company and uh, is responsible for the business development of that company. And, uh, well, great that you could make it. And, uh, Jonathan, the floor is yours. What's the business side? You see that there are changes uh, concerning uh, governments, EU Commission. Do you get enough support for your endeavors? Yeah. Please. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me. It's an honor to be uh, here and very energizing to be on a panel that is so keen on making a difference um, to this very important topic. As Friedbert mentioned, I'm a mining executive. Um, I've been working in a lot of different countries, most of which are probably not on your vacation wish list. Um, our company is about 80,000 people. We operate in 20 countries. And we supply the, my, the metals needed for our global battery transition. <coughs> Through our work, we've seen firsthand the evolution of this very conversation um, that we're gathered to discuss. And we also recognize the urgency. So let me get right to the point. Uh, building energy systems um, powered by clean energy technologies requires a huge increase in the supply of critical materials huh? that we just heard. So it's a 400% increase by 2030 or a 600% increase by 2050 to achieve our net zero go goals. In other words, if we don't increase the supply massively, we will not maybe, but for sure, miss our net zero goals. We recognize that the irresponsible behavior of some mining companies over the years eroded the sector's social license to operate. And now it's left on us to do much better across the spectrum of ESG considerations because essentially sustainability and the social license go hand in hand. Resources companies need to dust itself off our reputation has taken a hit over the decades, and rightly so, but we cannot hide anymore. We will not be able to perform and uplift communities where they don't want us to operate, plain and simple. We operate at the discretion of these communities and society as a whole. We need to take a more active role in communities, not only the host communities in frontier markets where we operate, but also and especially the communities in developed markets, the ultimate customers of iPhones, Teslas and co, that today can hardly name five mining companies if you ask them on the street. This is our fault and our responsibility. At the same time, policymakers need to be open to mining as an industry. We are seeing this in the Middle East, where Saudi Arabia has made mining the third pillar of Vision 2030, but we also see adverse forces in Latin America, that we just heard, and a mere standstill in Europe. Policymakers and advocates in this room also have the responsibility to not fall for an overly simplistic narrative by way of example, mining companies are bad, electric vehicles are good. The reality is that the EV sector alone will require 165,000 tons of cobalt by 2026, um, which is the equivalent of the total supply today. EVs also require four times more copper than a combustion engine. So as you can see, the narrative isn't as binary as some may suggest. Yes, electric vehicles are good, but we need to accelerate our common understanding that our industry must be part of the solution and not part of the problem. If you're serious about net zero, you have to be pro-mining. 
Now you may ask, but what about recycling? Well, recycling could help, but a binary argument here is also counterproductive. The answer is that both things are true. To meet the global demand, we need to uplift primary production today, and we need to learn more about recycling of batteries and scrap materials. Analysts estimate that by 2050, 40 to 75 percent of Europe's clean energy metal needs could come from recycling. But if and only if, Europe provides substantial financing and investments now. But as of today, neither sufficient second life material nor the required recycling technologies exist on an industrial scale. Just ask yourself, how many old smartphones do you keep at home in your drawer? The biggest purchase order in history, as my CEO likes to call it, also requires a fairer distribution of value along the supply chain. We heard the example of the Democratic Republic of Congo that holds 80% of the global cobalt reserves. And if you take your, your smartphone that in the store take, costs maybe $1,000, <coughs> the material costs in the far, uh, smartphone is about $200, the battery is about 20 but only $1.50 is the value of Congo that goes back into this country um, that is indispensable for even having this device. Where national policymakers find its boundaries, industry participants need to take action. So we at ERG, for example, we brought together market participants to create binding rules of engagement for responsible sourcing. The 140 organization strong global battery alliance and its flagship project, the Battery Passport, is conveying digital information to end consumers about key ESG and lifestyle metrics. So what does it mean? In the very near future, every single EV will have a QR code that allows full transparency on material provenance cradle to grave. In closing, I would like to reference the importance of knowledge sharing and innovation. We heard Building a copper mine uh, takes 15 years, sometimes longer. We don't have this time. The role of accelerating exploration through technology is indispensable. We spent at ERG the last couple of years in developing smart exploration technology, among other initiatives, and we're about to unveil in Saudi Arabia a fleet of autonomous Mars rover-like sampling robots. This is a technology that we hope to share with governments and industry alike. This is what positive action looks like. Uh, yes, it means sharing some secrets, and we may be even taking a hit in the short term, but it brings us all forward. The future of critical minerals will not be owned by a single company, rather a brain's trust of policymakers, governments, and industries, willing, industry players willing to make a difference. So once again, thanks for having me today and giving me the opportunity to address you today. I'm looking forward to hearing each and every one of yours proposal because what is very clear to me is that mining is a contact sports and no one company alone can tackle these issues alone. Thank you so much. Uh, it was also fascinating and, and I think very helpful.